Welcome everyone to Ma's April monthly meeting. Um, I'm Elizabeth Hargrave, our club president, and I'm going to do a little intro with a bunch of club news. We've got a lot of events going on in April um, and also some fungi in the news items to, uh, to let you know about. Annie's going to do our ID table this month. Um, Alden Dirks is here to do a short presentation on um, gyromitrin. Is that I don't actually know how to say that out loud. I've only read it. I'm realizing <laughs> um, the, the toxin in false morels. Um, and then Maria Pinto is going to uh, give us a presentation called Dispatches from the African Diaspora mm -hmm. um, about some of her explorations in fungi. Um, my slides are illustrated with pictures from iNaturalist and Annie's going to go through um, more pictures from iNat, but I wanted to highlight this one that was not in the maw picture, but I went looking to see who's been finding morels and they are uh, just starting to come up. They get underreported on iNaturalist because people don't want to give away their spots, but uh, this picture was taken a couple days ago in Tacoma Park. <laughs> Uh, so lots of upcoming events, um, especially around Earth Day. We've been requested to help out with some different celebrations. Um, we've got some volunteers that are going to be at an Earth Day celebration at the Smithsonian Anacostia Museum on the 22nd. Um, that's most of the day. Um, and then there's a community science festival the next weekend at Lake Needwood with Montgomery County Parks. Um, so those are both big sort of outreach events, but um, Ma folks are welcome to come and help spread the mushroom love. Um, if you send me an email at info at mawdc.org, um, I can connect you with the people that are staffing both of those. Um, if you want to officially come or just um, show up and say hi. Um, April 23rd is our next DNA sequencing lab. This one's going to be down at Jug Bay. Um, and all of these, I think, have more... Oops. Gosh, I keep hitting my slide, sorry. All of these um, have more information, I think, as events on our website at modic.org as well. Um, and then the last thing here, there's more events on other slides, but the last one here is um, that our monthly meeting is always the first Tuesday, so the next one will be May 2nd. Um, I wanted to highlight one thing, which is that Annie Weissman has arranged a book party slash signing. Um, uh, there's a new Audubon Society guide for mushrooms of North America. So many of you probably have the guide that Audubon put out in 1981 that was edited by Gary Linkoff. Um, it's one of the books I started out using. That book has not really been edited or updated since then until now. Um, so uh, Jacob Kalichman, who many of you met at Sequinota um, the last couple of years, uh, was the editor for the new version of this book. He's been doing all kinds of thinking about mushroom names, had to do tons of work, of course, because lots of Latin names have changed, but also thinking about making common names make a little bit more sense um, and how to organize things so that you can find them easily in the guide. So I am super curious to see what he has come up with. Um, the cost of the event is basically to buy a copy of the book from Solid State Books, who's hosting it. Um, you can't register quite yet, but Annie's going to send out an email when that's ready to go um, and folks can sign up. We don't really have a good idea of how many people are going to come and they're trying to figure out what kind of space to get for us. Um, so go, do go ahead and sign up if you're interested when you get that email. Um, so the, and the structure of their event will basically be that Sarah Nella Lernaris from our club will, is going to interview Jacob a little bit about the book and about fungi in general. Um, and then Jacob will be available to sign your copy. So that'll be April 28th, which is a Friday night, I think. Um, if you can't make it, the pre-orders for the book are, are live right now on the website for Penguin Random House. So you can find it that way too. Um, another event that I wanted to especially highlight is the mushroom tasting. And um, maybe April can say a few words about this because she's been organizing it and is looking for cooks. Yeah, thanks. Um, 
I and the culinary committee are um, we're bringing it back the um, the mushroom tasting event that used to be a semi annual thing. This will be our first since before the pandemic, and um, we're um, introducing some new things this year. I've got a um, an expert um, judging panel and extra prizes, and it's going to be great. So right now we. I think we've only got five people who have signed up to cook um, and we're looking for um, at least 10. So come, um, let me put this in the chat. That form, um, it, it's just got a couple simple questions including what you would like to cook. We, we are also looking for some other volunteers. I had actually a lot of other general volunteers. So we, we need more cooks than general volunteers right now. So, um, so yeah, please uh, look out for an email also for registration soon. I'm gonna put that out after the, the call for cooks closes. Awesome. I am excited that this is getting this event is getting up and going. It's always a fun one. The other thing that we've has been sort of a tradition with these spring tastings is because there aren't that many mushrooms up yet. Um, people have often brought um, other wild foods because there's lots of plants out this time of year. So always fun stuff. Uh, there's a couple cultivation events that have been scheduled. Uh, several of you came out last year to um, one that I went to at Backbone Farm, which is way out in Oakland, Maryland, but it's a really cool operation. They do how many thousand shiitake logs a year and um, I think like 4,000 or something. So also Earth Day weekend, <laughs> Um, they have this inoculation weekend that is not um, aimed at you going home with your own shiitake logs. It is aimed at helping the farm get their logs um, inoculated for their giant operation. So they get a bunch of volunteers to come out. Um, it sounds like a pretty cool event just to see the scale of what they do. Um, and that's free to just go help them out. Um, and then July 9th, they're going to do a cultivation workshop like the one that we did last year. Um, I think they're going to do shiitake logs and oysters probably again. Um, so more information about that is on our website on the calendar. Okay. Um, I've been showing this slide for a few months, but always worth noting what the weekends are to hold later in the year for weekend long forays. Um all of these are ones that our members have gone to in the past and really enjoyed. The one that we run is going to be Labor Day weekend up in Pennsylvania. Um, Jacob Kalichman is going to be there again. And um, the editor of Fungi Magazine, I think, is one of the special guests. So that'll be fun. Um, the NAMA foray is going to be down in Henderson, North Carolina the weekend before that. Um, which is the North American Mycological Association, sort of the national or you know North American association of all the mushroom clubs. Um, and apparently registration for that just opened up. So you have to be a member of NAMA, which I think is maybe 25-ish bucks and you get a discount if you're a member of MAW. Um, and then you can go register for that for right now. Sequinota, the registration is not open yet. So do not fret that you don't see it on our website, but... Um, We'll probably open it up in about June as we get that organized. Um, we The board just passed our budget for the year last month. Uh, we were working through some decisions about how much money we want to spend this year because we keep running a big surplus every year. So uh, last year we took it about $4,000 more than we um spent partly because our membership just keeps going up um and our reserves are like fifty thousand dollars right now so we passed a budget that um spends significantly more than we expect to bring in this year and we'll see if we actually bring in that little or if our membership keeps going up and we actually fail to run a deficit and spend down our reserves if we do maybe we'll get even more ambitious for next year um but we're trying to spend it on stuff that y'all have told us that you care about. Um, so uh, about $6,000 of it will go to research grants, um, which then uh, turn back into presentations in future monthly meetings when people come back and report on their 
research um our dna team that's been doing all kinds of cool stuff um has a budget for all of their supplies and sequencing um the management platform that we use for uh for everyone doing their sort of automatic renewals of their membership and and the whole website and and things is a significant chunk of change because we pay for it every other year um so those are some of the things that the money's going to and then you know renting venues for the culinary events and and things like that as well um if you want more details on the full budget feel free to email matt our treasurer his email is treasurer at modc.org um Hopefully, I, I tried to keep it short. I know no one really likes listening to budget presentations, um, but feel free to get the long version. All right, so my little news recaps from things that have been in the news in the last month. Um, both the New York like Times and Friday. Science Friday had coverage this month about a lawsuit against Jack Daniels Distillery um, because there is a fungus that feeds on ethanol vapors, which are escaping from the whiskey barrels in the barrel houses that Jack Daniels uses to age their whiskey. What's that? Um, and apparently this stuff is just like all yeah. over every surface in this town. And so they are suing to stop Jack Daniels from building a new barrel house. Um so this is a phenomenon that has known about has been known about for a long time since 1872. Someone first sort of uh, noted that this happened near um, alcohol production, but uh, the, the fungus was actually only sort of described and named in 2007. Um, the next item that I have was another Science Friday story uh, about a study that was in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences um, about using mycoforestry as a method of um, protein production that is actually carbon negative. So this chart is kind of um, lightly colored, but... Um, basically what it is saying is that the land use for growing mushrooms is higher than other forms of protein so um you know beef can be grown you can grow a kilogram of protein on 37 square meters and it takes a to get a kilogram of protein it takes 668 square meters to grow um lactarius delicious but um the carbon results are quite different so beef is is making uh carbon emissions and nectarius is actually absorbing carbon while it is producing that protein so science friday interviewed the the scientists that the put this paper out or you can go read it and online as well um Oh, this was in my my news feed, and I thought I would pass it along. There are some really cool ideas in this article on tastingtable.com um, about ways to use mushrooms as sort of a plant-based meat. So they have, you know, crab cakes and and uh, sort of pulled pork style mushroom and and some other things. Not super detailed recipes, but but very interesting cooking ideas, which you might turn around and. Uh, make something for that culinary event. Uh, and the last thing that I have is just an article that ran in the New York Times book section um, about mushroom related books. Uh, I had heard of most of these, but not a couple of them. So the, the first two were sort of nonfiction, mushrooms are cool type books, Entangled Life and The Secret Life of Fungi. Um, we actually had Eugenia Bone as a speaker. You can find it on our YouTube channel. Um, talking about the Fantastic Fungi Community Cookbook, um, which is a really beautiful cookbook. Uh, the Way Through the Woods is a memoir that involves mushroom hunting, among other things. Um, and Mexican Gothic is a uh, fiction that I think involves a pathogenic mushroom. I don't remember. Sorry. Um, and I think they put Alice's... Apparently, this is a new pop-up version of, of uh, Alice in Wonderland that apparently has very nice mushroom art for the pop-up of the caterpillar or something. 
maybe someone will get a copy and, and uh, show us more pictures. So that is all I have for this month. And I will turn things over to Annie for the ID table.